Greetings, everyone. It's time for another episode of Viewport Relay, a bi-weekly podcast where the Viewport team looks at the latest news in the gaming industry. As always, I'm your host, Albert Corson, joined by Tristan John. Hello. And Alex Nestor. Hey. Alex, do you ever feel that you're left behind? We might have brought this up. Yeah, we, we did this yeah, bit already. I feel it at least twice. So, yeah. I, I just need to check in on you. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we can start it. Maybe, maybe we, you know, <laughs> save the best for last. <laughs> mm-hmm. Be like... With our hosts, Tristan Jung. I, I don't know why that reminded me of Price Alex, is, Price is Alex Right. <laughs> and your host, Alex Albert-Corson. All right. Anyways, um, episode 76. Oh, boy. I, yeah, I saw that number today when opening the news talk, and I, I was getting like PTSD. I, this is this is kind of this is already mm-hmm. one of the worst episodes. We've already reused the bits. Uh huh. Um, there might be four times the detail in this episode, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I don't think there will be. 16 times the length. No, don't do that. Okay. 24-hour podcast starting now. Um, No, we're uh, we're in episode 76. I don't know where to go from here. You guys help me out. Say something. What have you been playing? Thank you. That sounded, that sounded like someone edited that in. Anyways, mm-hmm. yes, we're going to start with our favorite opening, which is what games have we been playing? And I will start because mine is boring, because I have been sucked into a black hole, you could say, of Final Fantasy. I I alluded to it last episode that the insurge, is that even a word? Upsurge? Is that a word? Insurge. An insurge. Uh, I, I think name. upsurge. I think insurge is like halfway to saying the name of the game insurgency, but yeah. just I just gave up halfway through. Um, no, an upsurge. Everyone's playing Final Fantasy XIV. I, you know, played a lot before, but I was like, you know what? You know, I got four months till Endwalker. You know, there's a lot of stuff to grind. You know, I should get started now. So I've been grinding, building like special pretty weapons. Pretty gathering tools, all that jazz, getting geared up, getting ready for the next expansion, even though it's not going to really matter. Um, but yeah, I've played played a lot of Final Fantasy. I'm trying to think if I've played anything else. A little bit of Rogue Legacy 2. I got up to uh, New Game Plus 6, and then I was like, alright, there really is no more no more point in playing this until uh, until they add more, uh, more uh, content. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, so early access, you know. Who wants to go next? I'll go next. So yeah, uh, the DLC for uh, Total War Warhammer 2 came out. Beast Man and the, uh, another Lizard Man Lord. I didn't actually buy the... Chameleon Man. Yeah, the Chameleon. Chameleon. Oxalotl. But yeah, uh, I didn't actually buy the DLC itself. The Beast Man I watched campaign of, they look really fun now. Like, you can build these Hearthstones, and the Hearthstones, like, prevent uh, anybody from inhabiting runes of the settlements you leave behind in that region. So they have to destroy the Herdstone to be able to recolonize. Because I think that was always kind of a problem with the Horde factions back in the day, as like Chaos or Norska, where you would destroy a whole bunch of stuff, but then they just like kind of come in behind you and just rebuild slowly. So you'd have to like go on a merry-go-round over and over again to f- eventually actually destroy everybody. So this kind of put something in the way so that the enemy factions can't just keep rebuilding over and over again. That was pretty cool. Uh, but I've been playing uh, the Dwarf uh, Free Lord that they came out with, and they reworked, like, Oaf Gold and stuff. It's been pretty fun. Dwarves, they got firepower and all that, so I like playing them. Did you build Ogre Mercenaries? I've not actually gotten the opportunity yet. I I. I don't really raise many settlements as a dwarf faction, so it's hard to get them to spawn. Oh, so I haven't, I haven't, they're not just yeah. like free reign? Nope, nope. They basically will spawn rarely after like a battle or if you raise a lot of settlements or ta- do raiding parties and things like that. They have a chance to spawn as well. Gotta play so, like, so, uh, like a special event node. So yeah, you'd have to play like Norska or something to get a high chance of seeing them. You, got, you gotta play like underground operation dwarf where you just send one of your mm-hmm. lords out into the middle of green skin territory and he's like vietnam right he's like <laughs> yeah. raising settlements that's like running around mm-hmm. build extra gyrocopters for extra aesthetic 
Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now, I, I, I don't know. Dwarves are kind of slow, but they're also kind of fun in their own way. They're like super meaty and just really strong units. So, I, I don't know. It's kind of easy, but it's also just kind of fun because playing some other factions is actually pretty difficult. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's the primary game. Uh, oh, man, I've also been just watching a lot of uh, Update 1.3 RimWorld. It's really wanted me to get into that game. So I've been trying to resist the temptation of just Why? You really own the game. That. You I know, I bought game. it, so I don't know what you I'm waiting for at this game. point. <laughs> I don't I, understand. I don't, I don't get it either, because, man, it's just, it's so cool, the stuff they added in 1.3. In terms of this new building materials, new technologies and stuff, and then the I the whole ideology system is awesome. I, I love it. Spoiler so alert I've... to um to what's gonna happen to one of our news articles, but my Steam Deck is going to be a portable RimWorld machine and it's gonna be amazing. Oh yeah, I could totally see that as a good Steam Deck game. And it's probably not gonna use a lot of battery, so it's even better. Yeah, that game should run really fantastically on a Steam Deck. <laughs> yeah. But that, yeah, that's really the only main things I've been focusing on the past few weeks. About you, Tristan, what do you got? All right. I've been playing some Raptor... I don't see... Oh, no. Raptor Boyfriend. Oh, my It's for research. Oh. It's for research. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. uh-huh. It was fun. Don't... Don't, don't knock on me like that. I've been playing a little yeah, bit of Raptor novel. Boyfriend. Uh, yeah, it's a dating sim visual novel. Check it out. Uh, not do you do you need to elaborate on this research or is N- that no. just sound really sketchy to everyone listening? No, I, <laughs> listeners will figure it out in a couple months. Don't worry about it. Um, played a couple rounds of Pummel Party, which is that like claymation Mario Party game. Um, mm-hmm. And CS:GO CS:GO update ranked up to silver three guys. Ooh. Whoa, we're climbing? We climbing. We're getting to Nova. Um, we did a little flip-flop between Valorant and CSGO because we ran into a little hiccup and we were really frustrated at levers and EFKs, but we, we back. We're, we're, we're on Counter-Strike Go. Are there levers yeah. in Valorant? There are no levers in Valorant. That's why I was suggesting that we played that instead, but uh, people they don't want to learn Valorant. I feel like once you rank up more in CSGO, you'll get less levers and AFKers for sure. Yeah, we'll get less levers mm-hmm. and AFKers, and then we'll get cheaters instead. So I'm, I'm you ex- get Smurfs. Yes. You get Smurfs, actually, which is probably worse. Because <laughs> that doesn't make your ego feel good. Yeah. When, when you say, we just lost because they had an aimbotter. But you, when, when you say, we just lost because they're better, it doesn't. Uh, oh, don't worry. Our ego has been thoroughly demolished of we lose and, you know, we're like, oh, the rando on our team did so bad. And then we look at them and they're sometimes higher ranked than us. So it's like <laughs> I, nothing to say. Shrug. Oh, I thought you were going to say mm-hmm. we look at and they're actually the top on the scoreboard. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking you're going to say, too. No, no, no. They're usually I, I got it. I'm, I'm OK at the game. Um, and then the last game I've been playing has been called Final fantasy 14 7 times 2 online okay. uh so the the two week thing the two week free thing is is happening uh so of course i decided to activate it when i had a trip in the middle of the 14 day period uh i logged on and played about 10 rounds of mahjong i think i helped with uh like an two hours of mount farming and then i haven't opened the game since so mm-hmm that's welcome that. back see you next year yeah i'll see yep. you guys next year it, it was your officer duty to at least show up for those two hours yeah i think if, if i gift you a year sub would you play uh at this point i'm gonna have two years of gifted yeah. subs get in line okay <laughs> <laughs> you thought he, right. uh, ironically enough that came up like two days ago that someone in the fc was gonna gift him a year sub tristan's like I want you to realize it is not the financial burden, which is why I'm not that game. <laughs> People keep thinking I can't afford the year of subs. That's not the issue, guys. Maybe it's the opportunity cost. Mm-hmm. If we get you in, yeah, it's one less barrier to get to 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 pull you in. Well, mm-hmm. here's the other yeah. issue: someone in the FC free company is FC, like the guild that we're in, um, told me another way to get my mahjong f- mahjong fix. 
So when I was in, in Santa Cruz, I was actually just playing Mahjong on that thing rather than Final Fantasy XIV. Is there a Mahjong dating sim that you can play Mahjong? <laughs> do, do you oh, research yeah, there, hard? There, there, there are the definitely time. at least, there's two I can think of. Oh <laughs> my god. The no, His knowledge knows no bounds. <laughs> I don't remember what they're named. It's like Pretty Girls Mahjong or something. Yeah, it's Is it like weird. actual Mahjong or is it like the Americanized Mahjong where you, you know. Well, one, of, one of them's definitely actual Mahjong and a lot of the reviews were like, I bought this for the the girls, mm-hmm. but I had to learn actual mahjong to be able to win. Yep. And then the other one's like the you know Americanized matching mahjong. Yeah, that's a no go yeah. for me. You can get authentic How? or Americanized. How difficult you is mahjong to learn? Not very difficult. Mm-hmm. How about there's like different? Isn't there like Richie mahjong and stuff like that? Yeah, that's. Didn't the clubhouse games have like four different types of mahjong? That the Richi Mahjong is the one that is in Final Fantasy fourteen. Oh, okay. Is that like casual mode? No. It's like the official mode. Oh, okay. Hey man, if you wanna play, let me know. If I wanna lose, I'll let you know. Yeah. You can also buy Yakuza and learn that way. Oh. There's always Mahjong I just, and Yakuza games. I just got another Yakuza game because half in, in the in the year and a half I've been subbed to Humble Choice. Mm. Six months have been a new Yakuza game is like the headlining game. Yeah, they sort of like, yeah, they start with zero and then they kiss. I noticed they kept throwing in like Kiwami 1, Kiwami 2. I just got I assume they're throwing, yeah, the 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 remasters on now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or remaster. I don't know if it's a remaster Mm -hmm. or remake. Yeah, it's a remaster. Yesterday, I got, or today, I got an email. It was like, claim your games now. And it was like another Yakuza game. I was like, they, they, Sega's got their money in Humble yeah, Bundle's Se- pockets Sega knows. or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Any last minute stragglers? Are we good to move on to the news? Let's hit that news. Let's hit the news. Alright. Um, you know how we've been talking for about two years, maybe more than that almost, on like, what's going on with Blizzard? You know, is the quality of their games dropping? Like, you know, they seem to just be all about the money now. And, you know, was, is it Activision? Is it blah, blah, blah? Well, the state of California has just revealed that it had a two... And everyone's probably already heard about this already. It's been all over the gaming news, the gaming the gaming news sphere. E- even yeah, the gaming non-gaming sphere. news sphere. Even the mm-hmm. non-gaming news sphere. Um, but essentially... Over the past, over this, only this two-year investigation, which means obviously this behavior went more than just the past two years. Um, essentially, there's been a horrible culture of sexual harassment and sexual abuse at Blizzard Entertainment. Um, and yeah, not good. I don't want to go too much into the deets because they're kind of depressing. Like trigger but- warning. Right yeah, here. like, but, and I'm not going to go too much into, like, Google it anywhere, any site has the actual, you know, allegations, uh, allegations and things like that. And once again, you know, um, this is a criminal, or th- not a criminal, but this is, you know, a legal matter. And, you know, the whole, you know, innocent until proven guilty is definitely true in a legal sense, but like... I'm not a court of law, right? And I think Blizzard's pretty guilty. Okay. Just okay. I thought you were going to come out and play like the, the both sides card here. And my eyes are super wide for a second. I just want to be like innocent till proven guilty. But in my eyes, which is not the United States justice system, I think Blizzard's pretty guilty. And to extend upon why I'm kind of upset while saying that is essentially... The moment this lawsuit came out, the law, you know, probably a lot of lawyers at Blizzard and whatnot and PR got together and they released a note and they were essentially like, none of this is true. None of this happened. What are you talking about? And then all of the employees were like coming out with their stories and Blizzard just looked like a fool, fools and Mm -hmm. really bad. Um. I'll stop talking if you guys want to jump. I don't have any really discussion questions. We're just going to chat about this one. Um, this is personally like horror, like 
really bad compared to the Ubisoft one from last year. Oh, th- this is like exponentially worse than the Ubisoft mm-hmm. one. And the Ubisoft one was pretty bad to start with. Yeah. Um, I guess some of the good news is that some of the abusers have pretty much left the company already. Um, but that doesn't mean obviously what they did, you know, has still didn't have ramifications or that there's people, you know, that work there that suffered at this, that still work there that are having, you know, psychological trauma or whatnot from what happened there. But, um, does this explain a lot of what's been going on at Blizzard, do you think? I, I mean, this combined with the other two news articles that we're going to talk about. I, we can bring them up now. Yeah, we it. can. I, I feel like it's just mm-hmm. a combination of everything, right? Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I feel it was a contri- definitely a contributing factor to a lot of the dominoes in this puzzle of what a modern Blizzard is. Yeah, and just to link back to, like, the past year of departures, like, Jeff Kaplan leaving, uh, Ben Brode from the Hearthstone, you know, the Mm -hmm. the director of the Hearthstone team leaving, those guys, at least from, like, an external point of view, like, are real stand-up guys, and I feel like, I think there was, was it, I read an article, and I forget who it was talking about. It might have been Jeff Kaplan, but essentially someone reported um, sexual harassment to him. Mm -hmm. And he obviously was like, this is horrible. He's like, do you want to, you know, report this to HR? And the employee was like, no, because it will look bad upon, you know, my performance reviews. Like, they'll essentially, like, take action against me if I report this. And I felt like that obviously had you know, being a stand-up guy and all had an effect on some of these people wanting, being like, is this the company that I started at? And like, what has it become? And do I want to keep working here? Like for me, this obviously like, no duh is, this is definitely something that's been plaguing Blizzard for the past couple of years. Um, because, you know, just speaking from a normal human being, right? Like you, if you're in this type of environment, like you're not going to be inspired to do your best work or even capable of doing like the best work you can do. Um, so just treating your employees like garbage like this is just, just a sad thing to see from such a prestigious company like this. Mm, yeah. Cause ultimately they, it seemed that at least by the allegations, they were ultimately the employees were basically isolated with their issues. They didn't really have any, upper management chain or not upper management but like hr was not really available to them in order yeah. to resolve these issues and everyone always says right the thing you know the thing you'll see on reddit on every like ask reddit that of like what's a false thing that everyone thinks is believe and everyone's always like hr is not there you know to protect you mm-hmm. they're there to protect the company mm-hmm. but this is like a whole new level of like scummy right for the hr yeah they it seemed, were really it, acting like basically this. they always say that it's a non-retaliatory and it really sounds like that was quite the opposite blizzard environment yeah. where it was potentially retaliatory if you <laughs> reported issues to hr not even potentially i think some of the some of the things even said like mm-hmm. they were literally denied promotions because they came mm-hmm. out for certain things yep tristan did you find what you were looking for no i'm pretty sure it's just a random reddit comment blaming jeff kaplan was also adding to this but like there it's like No evidence against it. I think what I was going to say is, um, you know, a lot of people usually have a couple of things that they wish they can fix with the company, a couple of things that they're actively trying to fix, and a couple of things that just, like, they deal with. And I feel like for a lot of the old timers, it was just, you know, mounting pressure. The other news articles about, like, Blizzard trying to push out unfinished products is going on. This is going on, and everyone probably was just like, you know what, screw this. I'm going to go do something else. Um, yeah. And now we're just kind of seeing the fallout of that starting to, to air out all at, all at once, which is surprising. Which is surprising, yeah. And obviously this is impacting not just, you know, what has been happening over the past years, but what's happening at the company right now where, you know, as we record our podcast on Tuesday, there's articles coming out that, 
hundreds and hundreds of Boozer's employees are planning on striking outside the headquarters tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, The, uh, I think it was a... They're hiring a, uh, like a third party law firm to do an investigation. Yeah. An internal investigation. Yep. Which is weird because you came out in PR and said none of this was true. And then (laughs) three days later, after your employees destroy you for saying, how dare you say that? They're like, uh, you know, maybe we should actually uh, get someone to look into this. Okay. It was kind of true. Mm-hmm. Not yet. No, they, they can't say that yet because the internal team hasn't, you know, come out their and, findings you know, yet. three months mm-hmm. will say we found nothing, no wrongdoing. Or either they will come out and say it, but they'll say like, oh, but you know, that big perpetrator, I forget, it was like the guy who, I think it was a WoW producer or something or director of WoW mm-hmm. who like, was like groping, like lots of cases and like groping female uh. employees. Like he left in like 2019 or something like that. Yeah. But like. I hope they don't come out and be like, yeah, you know, we, we, we did our research. We found, a, a, sadly, a bunch of cases. But the good news is that those people all left because, you know, we actually did something about it. Good job, us. And it's like, no, no, no. No, no, no. Or there's going to be, like, one fall person for the whole thing. And they just Bobby fire that Cody. person. $300 million buyout uh-huh. to get Bobby out of there. No, I think, I think it, honestly, like... I don't know what people who work at Blizzard wants, but I feel like this is end. This is going to end with most likely that uh, the president of Blizzard, I forget his name, um, stepping down. Brack, Alan Brack. No way. Jail. You think so? I I feel like it. It depends on how. I guess it, it's it's going to be hard to say. It's it's going to come down to who's the highest person who knew and didn't do anything about it. I'm pretty sure everyone knew if. Like, the one incident, the holiday incident that they were talking about, there's no way the leadership didn't know about that. That's true. That's true. And, like, so. and, and the reason I'm skeptical, maybe I'm being pessimistic, but remember when this happened at Riot? Literally nothing happened. But was that as bad as this? Um, Maybe we just have enough, an, as much detail on that one. I, don't I know. mean, you they know. were also, like, supposedly a bro culture... Uh, dick pics, uh, lists shared among senior staff members detailing which female employees they would sleep with. Okay, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, so maybe... You know. They suspended their COO for two months without pay. And then, and, right, then I, and, and then they came back, I guess. All right, Brack, two months without pay. <laughs> uh-huh. It's kind of sad to say, but yeah, we'll have to see what's going on. Um... Obviously, this is affecting their current workflows right now. There was a guy who came out on the WoW team that said, like, pretty much no work is being done on WoW because the employees are all scrambling to essentially make the company make, you know, better itself. So, unfortunate, but, you know, it is news, so we, we talk about it here. That's that's our new catchphrase. It's news, so we have to talk about it. <laughs> that's so grim. Oh. Um, I, I was gonna say no, no. no I, I'm being pessimistic, but I really, really hope something actually happens with this because I feel like I think Riot was not California, but rather is more of like a civil lawsuit, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, that's what Correct. I was just about yeah. to say too. Yeah. This is different. This, this is a whole new level. Yeah, the whole state is like, okay, that's enough. That, that that's the end of the sentence. I don't even know mm-hmm. what what are the. I guess maybe I didn't read enough of articles, but like, what's the outcomes of past cases that have happened like this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what can the state do? Um, I don't know if it's going to turn into some like, you know, state oversee like advisory board where they're going to have to monitor the company for like you know a couple years to make sure that they're doing right things, yeah. or if there's actually like, I don't know if I don't think it'll go as far as like prison time for anyone, but it you know. It says in the relief section of the Bloomberg article that there's compensatory damages, punitive damages, unpaid wages, injunctive relief, declaratory relief, equitable relief, prejudgment interest. So it sounds like it's all money related. Money related. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I guess, you know, but for companies, I mean, I don't know how much money is going to be. Unfortunately, I hate this. I'm going to pessimist just like Tristan that it's, you know. It's not going to be enough to actually do anything, but yeah, sometimes it's a drop when, in the bucket for Activision Blizzard. 
Yeah, sometimes when it comes to, you know, getting to a, like, changing a company culture, when it starts affecting the piggy bank, you know, if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. Whatever it takes. Bobby Kodak's gonna have to make two Call of Duties a year now. <laughs> in order to no! This. All right, let's move on to happier news. Because last episode, we were disappointed, you could say, that the Switch open parentheses or sorry the nintendo switch open parentheses no 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 no. it's called the swoled the swoled 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 swoled, um was not the switch that we dreamed of it was merely a red herring this entire time but then mr gabe newell himself (laughs) lurking in the corner ready to jump at any opportunity well, not any opportunity. He would have jumped on a lot more opportunities if that was the case. That's true. But let's be real. The timing here is uncanny. Uh-huh. Nintendo releases this model that everyone thought was going to be stronger and be able to play their games, and it didn't. And then Gabe Newell comes out literally a week later and is like, here's a thing that is a portable PC that can play games that are actually good looking. Yep. Portable, dockable pc handheld and it's like this thing's coming out in december like they must have known that nintendo not not that they were going to release a weak version of the switch but i think they were like hey we could announce this you know if nintendo is going to wait until you know october to to release this thing Mm -hmm. like we can wait until october right um i think i think they were actually just waiting for nintendo to announce a new model Mm. for whatever switch whatever it might have been and then to release over yeah, exactly. I, I think that's exactly what their strategy was. Because, yeah, you think about it, it's a pretty competitive idea that, yeah. you know, instead of a Nintendo-based platform where you're getting a lot of Nintendo first-party titles, you're getting the Steam Deck, which has a lot of PC titles that probably might run better than on the Switch platform. Oh, it will run better. There's no, run. There is no <laughs> yes. question about that. Based on the specs it has, better. yes, it will absolutely run better than Age of Calamity. This game will run Skyrim. Yes. Yeah. It, it will Six run Age of Calamity at 20 frames per second. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to say that I should... Uh, this, 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 this right here might be my way to enjoy Persona 4 Golden. Just yeah. on, on yeah. the go. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, but either way, we didn't describe what it was for anyone who's unfamiliar. Um, the Steam Deck is essentially a portable, um, gaming PC. I mean, that's actually just literally what it is, what they've described what it is. Um, it runs Linux. It runs a compatibility layer called Proton to essentially run all of your Steam games that normally would, you know, don't have Linux ports to essentially work on this Linux, uh, based operating system. And, if you haven't seen any pictures of it, it's very interesting. It, it, it's the same thing. It's a 7-inch screen, not OLED, just a normal <laughs> screen. Um, 720p. Ethernet port? No Ethernet port mm. on the device, but the dock, which they haven't described too much what the dock is going to have. Uh-huh. Will pro- Actually, no, I think they did. I think they said it has an Ethernet Oh, nice. Dock. Okay. Um, but it has, what is it? So it has analog sticks, obviously, like the four buttons on each side. And then it has the haptic, like, mouse pad, trackpad thingies on yep. the, the mm-hmm. left and the yep. right hand. And then it has shoulder buttons, like L1, L2. And then it has back paddle buttons. So if you've yep, ever yep. had, like, um, what's that controller brand called? Mad Cat? Scuff. Scuff. Yes, Scuff. Not <laughs> Mad Cats. Yeah, so it has <laughs> back paddle bumpers that you can also bind, which is pretty cool. Um and then, in addition, they have, I, I forget the details, but there is going to be a dock that you can dock this into, uh, connect it up to a PC monitor, you know, get it to play on your monitor. And at the same time, interesting, you can use the dock to uh, be a second monitor to essentially, they were they were showing clips of it, like, um, using, uh, what was it, like, your Steam's friends list and, like, chatting with people on your, on your, on the Steam deck and then using, actually, the monitor to game on. It'd be cool if they could get, like, Discord working on this. Um, I don't know if Discord's for Linux. I don't think it is. Um, I'm sure they'll figure it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. but once again, they said that uh, this is literally just a PC that's running Linux in a small form factor. So they said, hey, if you want to go install Windows on this thing, like, go for it. Um, 
if you want to install Mac OS, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe go for it, I guess. But yeah. Um, I guess the most important thing starting at three ninety nine, and then the biggest model it, or the most expensive model with like more storage and faster storage, and I think it has like an anti glare screen. So like little upgrades, but nothing like groundbreaking in terms of the internal hardware. Um, goes up to six forty nine, um, at the most expensive. So, mm-hmm. what do you guys think about the price point of this? I think it's great. I think three ninety nine to you know versus the nintendo switch better hardware right yep. versus the xbox and ps5 better software i mean there's actually games on this thing and portability um so i think this is the 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 perfect price actually yeah and it, and it manages to be a bit cheaper than a typical gaming laptop which is another big plus. Uh, it's got a better form factor, obviously, and it's way lighter. But yeah, it meets your needs if really all you're using a laptop for is a mobile gaming platform. So I think that's another big plus of it. There was when there were, when when this was first announced, like the first video that came out on this, like about how they came upon with this, was Gabe Newell saying the price point was painful for Valve. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Especially for the cheapest model, which, you know, you're talking about a $400, you know, mobile PC that can play Doom Eternal at 30 to 60 FPS on, like, medium settings, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, they're losing money on this, like, big time, right? Like, I don't think they're making money from the base model. I don't know about the more expensive ones, but it's it's a very interesting approach from Valve in that, you know... You sell your PS5 at a loss, right? But you make $20 from every game. So to break even, you just need to sell three or four games or something like that, mm-hmm. right? For me, like, obviously they or like, I already buy games on Steam. So they've, you know, they've gotten years of my money. <laughs> but that doesn't mean mm-hmm. that, you know, necessarily because they've gotten some of my money that they need to sell this one at a loss, but they are. And the fact that, like, I already have so many games to play for this and I, you know, I might not necessarily buy any games ever on Steam again, even though I will. Um, it's it's just a really interesting decision. Mm-hmm. I, I think for, for people who don't want to build the gaming PC, they, they don't have a need for it. May- GPU shortage too, right? Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they had a 3DS, right? As their last gaming portable thing. PSP. PSP. Uh, like one of 10 people that had the Vita. I think this is, like, the right jump if they don't already own a Switch. Yeah, and I, I feel this might be also a good thing if you have a... Not a, exactly a young kid, but, like, a younger kid, and you want to get him into the master echelon of PC gaming. But you want to, like, <laughs> ease them into it. You, you don't want to play on that kitty Switch. They want to play a Steam Deck, play all your PC games that you got in your Steam library. Yeah, play some Honey so Pop might, 2 on there, you know? Yeah, Honey Pop 2, load it up. But yeah, okay, so you can okay, inter- okay, introduce okay. a new generation of gamers. What are you guys insinuating with <laughs> the PC here? game? I, I have a real point. Tristan's point, I don't know. He's suspect. <laughs> Uh, but introducing younger generations of gamers, because, you know, we're all phones and stuff, so tablets, things like that. Younger generation gamers into PC gaming through this device. And that that's how you're getting them. That's how Steam's making money. They'll buy the games. The young kids. Get them in. Hook them. The only thing that makes me sad about the Steam Deck is that I don't own Final Fantasy XIV on Steam. Otherwise, I could play this. Oh, on yeah. Game. No kidding. Oh. I don't have the Steam yeah, version. Yeah, and you can't, you can't run the Steam version with the... Uh, yeah. I actually don't know if it would work anyways, because Final Fantasy, even if you play on Steam, do you have to log into your Screen Enix account? No, I, I don't, don't think you do. I don't it's not think you the do, yeah. Store. yeah. I Dang. think it's separate. That would be cool. I, I don't know if you can run yeah, your same account through. Because I know you can't do like uh, the normal download and then do Steam expansions. Yeah. Dang. But anyways, Steam Deck. Uh, it's going to be interesting to find out which games are good for this and which games are bad. Someone called out an interesting thing the other day on Reddit that I saw that was like, now if only Total War could fix their text scaling or <laughs> strategy games in general, otherwise this would be the perfect like portable Total War machine. But 
Uh, yeah, I think the the seven yeah, screen is a little I too would, small to play a strategy yeah. game. Like you Total wouldn't War. be able to tell too well what's going on in Total War. Yeah. Something like Civ, I think you could do something in Civ, maybe. But oh yeah, I, I think turn based, you could be able to play them, no problem. Also, they said certain games just won't work on this game. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. was like excited to, I was like, I'll just use this as my Destiny Two machine, but Destiny Two doesn't work on this on this thing. Oh, really? Destiny that? Two? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. They they explicitly called out Destiny Two. Yeah. Because I heard some games, they were having troubles integrating the anti-cheat in, mm-hmm. but they're working with specific partners um, to get it work. Was it Warframe? I think Here. the devs came out yesterday mm. that literally said they were specifically working on right now getting compatibility with Steam Deck. Um, yeah, due to anti-cheating software, some of the games such as Destiny 2, Apex Legends... Rainbow oh, Six yeah. Siege and PUBG will not run on the Steam Deck. Okay. Yeah, but I they said they're working with it. So, you know, I think some of the big ones, I think, I think, you know, Valve would work with EA. Mm-hmm. You know, they got their, but their buddies again, right? Uh, you know, work with EA to get a working version of that on. Yeah, and I, I don't think we mentioned it, but when's the first wave of these uh, Steam Decks expected to come out? Because I know December. now you're waiting until like almost mid to late 2022 or something for your yeah, model i think the wait list on the i think the the most pre-orders were confirmed to be on the 649 model so gabe gabe newell sighing a little relief right there mm-hmm. <laughs> um but his one billion right... net worth safe <laughs> exactly his knife collection or whatever the heck he collects <laughs> now um no so i think the wait list right now has it q3 2022 if you want the most okay, expensive yeah. But they're supposed to start shipping in December this year. I heard rumors that it got pushed back to Q1, but I don't know if that was just people that were looking at the the pre-order page noticed that it said, like, you know, estimated time is Q1. But mm-hmm. the initial release, they said, was supposed to be sometime in December. They're hoping to launch the first one. Okay. So. Yeah, so they'll have some time to maybe work that out. Because, yeah, those, especially Siege, Apex Legends, and... Uh, destiny 2 those seem like pretty big games that you would want to have as like a i don't know like an example of like a forefront of what your multiplayer gaming uh catalog looks like for yeah, this it's, mobile it's interesting because i feel like they'd be important but at the same time and i thought about this with final fantasy was like if i need to be somewhere where i have a constant internet connection yeah it's true like, enough yeah it's how, spotty. how much are you mm-hmm. playing a multiplayer game on these things that's the question and there's no there's no 4G model of these things, right? They didn't confirm any integration with any network partners or anything, right? I mean, don't you got phones? You can just tether. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, tough crowd. Anyways. I'm clapping. Hey, this is not a good day for Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I was, I was going to say, I feel like we've been giving cloud gaming a bad rap. And, I mean, of course, they deserve it. But I feel like this model works very, very close to what cloud gaming should be, right? You own all these games already. Mm -hmm. Now, if it came with 4G, that would have been great. But um, you can play it on the go. It's, quote unquote, a seamless experience. Everything carries over. You don't have to worry about anything. It just works. It just works. That's why I got this thing. That's why I pre-ordered it, because it's like, I literally have 700 Steam games that I'm ready to play on this, right. and I have, like, a backlog of games. And yeah, there, like, there's plenty of things that would work very well for this platform. Not only that, it has Bluetooth compatibility, so I can use wireless headphones, mm. <laughs> unlike the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, and the USB-C port is at the top, unlike the USB uh, or Nintendo Switch, where I sometimes want to use wireless headphones when it's docked, and you just can't do oh, that. and you can't do it. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is going to be cool. Who knows if it'll catch on? I think it's I think it's just a cool piece of tech to own. Who knows how much I'm actually going to use it? And I don't know that I don't know if that sounds snobby in any way, but like I think it's just a really cool piece of tech to have. Who knows if it's real? Um, it's actually just the uh, the new battle pass for the international. Exactly. It, it, was, <laughs> yeah. it was it was it was $5 to pre-order, yeah. so you know, <laughs> I think they just scammed 100,000 people. Yeah, this is actually bucks. so they can fund the heavy update in TF2. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know what? I'm down for that. You know, I'll give like five dollars for that. Also, r- random thing before we go into our last thing. Um, 
I heard that they announced the Steam Deck the day after Elgato announced their new the stream, stream deck. deck. Yeah, there was. Yeah. So I don't think they have grounds for a lawsuit, supposing I think everyone knows what's like Steam has like a huge trademark and everything like that, but uh I mean I, I mean they got the uh Nintendo PR timing figured out, but then they missed the Elgato one. That you know. Wait, mm-hmm. wait, before before we end, can we talk about the name? I don't like the name. Steam Deck? I don't like it. W- what should it be? The rumors were Steam Pal or Steam Buddy or something like that. I don't know if I like those either. No. Buddy Pal. Everyone was saying they should call it like Steam Engine or something like that. No, that that but also doesn't you, make then, sense. Yeah, then you think it'd be like a programming engine. Yeah, it's like Source 3 or something, right? I don't know. Steam. Oh, no, this is the other one I heard. They, they said they should call it the Locomotive. Hmm. But that's too long of a name, I think. I think it should be condensation. You got valve, you turn on the valve, steam comes out, and then you have condensation on the window. <laughs> then it condensates. Yeah. It's okay. On the window. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing the game and you're and they have a built in thing in the OS where it starts fogging up the <laughs> fogging up the screen. It's like telling you've been playing too much, condensation's yep. building up. Please take a break. As the battery gets lower to get you to stop playing. Yeah. It's like a little Fills filter the on, on the screen. By the way, I yeah. just checked the battery life. Two to eight hours? Yep. It's all right, so said, I guess. Yeah, they said two hours if you're running a game that's very high. Like, essentially, it needs to run at max. Like, all the hardware needs to run at max settings. And you're playing at 60 FPS. Um, they say... I think they tested Portal 2. They said if you play at 30 FPS, um, it'll get, like six hours of battery life or something oh like that's that. pretty good yeah so that's why i was like rim world dude I'm wait like six, i'm getting like six to eight hours tekken of seven? Oh yeah oh, oh yeah, yeah you, you could tech a seven on this yeah that would be too oh, bad that'd be so cool people are saying you don't even need to carry a computer anymore you just carry your steam deck uh-huh. and you take like a monitor and then you just you just dock it in the monitor oh my god and then you just play like yeah you get one of those ultra thin monitors yeah yeah Totally. Or like an iPad or something. I don't know if you could like... Yeah, you could or... potentially get away with a tablet if you really mm-hmm. wanted to. But the question is if if the tablet would be better than the 7-inch screen that's already built in. Yeah, yeah. Get a Nintendo Switch for the OLED screen. Hook up your oh, Steam Deck man. to it. Yeah. Ooh. I, li- I like what you're thinking here. All right. Let's go on our last one. Um, I don't know if we're going to have time to do our last thing today. We're going to have to go quick. But... But By good, the way, there was... speaking of, sorry, I just got reminded about this. Speaking of new hardware, the play date, if you're listening to this episode as it drops, uh, it, the pre, the reservations are going to open in about an hour. So get ready for that. All right. I'm going to get that. Got to get that. All right. Um, finalizing our thing, you know, we ended on a sad note We're we're going, we're going progressively happier. Um, EA Play Live 2021, which was mm-hmm. essentially what EA normally does during E3, but I don't know if it's their new thing or if it was just because of this year with COVID and it being digital again or E3 being digital. Um, this was their E3 thing. Um, we will roll through the highlights and then we'll circle back to what we want to talk about because there's pretty much only one or two things to talk about mm-hmm. in this group that I know. Um, so they had... The Codemasters, right? They, they purchased Codemasters, so they talked about the new Grid Legends game. Yep, cards. Then we had an Apex Legend, a new... Is it Operator? What are they called, Tristan? You know. Uh, Legend. No, <laughs> maybe not a Legend. <laughs> Do you know, what are they called, Tristan? Uh, I, let's just go with Legend. It made me laugh, okay, so I like it. We're going to get made yeah, fun yeah. of. Okay. Uh, and then Lost in Random. I thought that game looked pretty cool when they showed it last year. Uh, that's like the, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, like a third like an adventure game, but it's like Tim Schafer-y mixed with like uh, Steve Burton. Mm-hmm. Is that the guy who did? That's, what, Tim that's the right name, right? Tim Burton. Tim Burton. Tim Burton. Steve Tim Burton. Tim Bur- He's a brother. He's a brother. Steve Steve brother Berners- yeah. Tim Berners-Lee made the internet and this game. Um, we got some Knockout City, you know, more DLC. Dodgeball. Dodgeball. We got... More looks into Battlefield 2042, and then they ended off with a little 
Dead Space. Just a little tease. Little tease. Don't know if it's a new game. It's going to be on next-gen consoles. Maybe this... Oh, the Steam Deck, maybe. PC. Oh, yeah. PC. All right. There you go. Another Steam Deck exclusive. Okay. So we don't know if it's going to be a remake or if it's going to be a new entry, but that being said, there's only one thing we want to talk about here, gentlemen. Someone Apex. Le- no, I'm just kidding. No. Okay. Fine, guys. Um, Battlefield Portal? Question mark? Battlefield Portal. Give us an mm-hmm. intro, Tristan. It, as I take a swig of water. It's like playing Far Cry scenarios. I don't know. That that was my like initial thinking of you kind of build your own campaign, I guess, right? You can sort of yeah. game mode you, pretty much. You can you can choose the map, you can choose the weapons, the con- victory conditions, um and it seems like it's it's more of a push in the user created content uh direction from the community. I personally think it's really weird. I don't know what you guys think about this. Uh, I, th- I, th- I think it's a bit of a response, actually. Uh, a lot of the criticism of Battlefield Five is they really didn't ever have any kind of community-driven content. It was really just whatever decisions they made, and that was basically what they pushed out to whatever the community ended up reacting, either positive or negative. Mm. So I felt this was a way they're trying to bring it to reality uh, like this ultimate battlefield life service and this is kind of how they're planning to do it is this battlefield portal feature where you're bringing in the old games in this case 1942 battlefield 2 and uh bad, bad company, company 2 bad company 2 yeah and, and battlefield 3 3, three. yeah, you yeah. Said 2 originally all right yeah so bad company 2 1942 and battlefield 3 uh, so they're bringing maps from those games, as well as the factions and a lot of the weaponry from those games. And you basically all throwing it together, to, as Tristan said, basically you're able to make these custom game modes, you're able to tweak all the variables and things like that for weapons, vehicle spawns, things like that. And just, uh, it's kind of like the old, like, uh, custom servers people used to run, uh, old dedicated servers on PC for these kinds of games where you just had random rules. He just did really stupid things like d- defibs only, or yeah, uh, like EOD this, this bot is like, rushes. This is like the best way I can describe this is like it's like For Honor, where you just took a mm-hmm. bunch of time periods and just mashed them together and be like, go play whatever you want and make a crazy rule set. You can like the the showcase ones they showed in the trailer was like like Alex was saying they did like World War Two. Germany, like Nazi soldiers, thir- what, what was it? Twenty four of them versus four battlefield twenty forty two specialists. Mm-hmm. Like twenty four versus four. Mm-hmm. Like what the heck? That's crazy. <laughs> and you could do like I don't know, like maybe the Nazis only have like pistols or like this bolt action rifles, and all of the battlefield twenty forty two have like you know silenced weapons and special gadgets and things like that, and C four and stuff like that. Uh, and Alex said they did like, what was it, 32 versus 32, Nazis with knives versus Battlefield 3 soldiers with defibrillators. Yeah, the defibs, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then the classic one tank versus 24 EOD bots or whatever the <laughs> heck that was. <laughs> yeah, the, the big thing for me, though, was uh, they're coming with, what, six uh, classic maps? Six classic maps. Games. Yep. Yep. So a lot of really good maps. I uh, they basically chose all the right ones. I think they did like a Twitter campaign in a few weeks before this, asking, "Hey, what's everybody's favorite uh, old Battlefield maps?" And uh, surprise, surprise, a lot of them are on this list. Uh, that they means... were just like spot checking. They're like, mm-hmm. "Please tell us we didn't completely mess up the maps." So we making for like that six looks months. good to me because that's in addition to the twenty forty two maps where we have I think seven. There's already six more on top of that of the classic maps. So, you know, we're at least at 15 or so maps at release, which is pretty decent, actually. Because I feel Battlefield Five did not have anywhere near that many maps at release. It had seven on launch, I think. Yeah. Maybe eight. But it didn't mm-hmm. get its next maps until, like, 
eight months later, I feel like, or something like that. No, mm-hmm. no, no. It was like, they released like Panzer Storm, I recall. Like, yeah, it was a like couple a couple months, months after. after and and then, then it was a very long time until we eventually got the Pacific Theater campaign. Yeah, there might have been one maps. more map tossed yeah. in there, but that was it. Mm-hmm. I, I, so that's I, good. And these maps look very nicely remade. They don't look like they're just kind of like straight ripped out of the old engine. So I think they did a lot of touch-ups and things. I wonder what the discovery mechanism will be like because you know, I'm looking at the kind of the press release and the logic editor it looks pretty complicated. Like I can imagine people putting a lot of time into this. I just hope mm-hmm. they don't screw it up because like, if you spend 100 hours making a map and there's no way to, like, share it with people... There is. They've already confirmed that. There's going to be a, like, a Battlefield Portal site. Uh-huh. Kind of like the old battle log system, I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. But basically, you're going to be able to take a share code and you could, like, give it to your friend. Uh-huh. They could tweak settings, save it, and give it back to you as a new code, and they you'd be able to play their tweaked mode of your mode. Got so, yeah, it. there is going to be a system to share settings because okay. yeah it's going to be pretty in depth because they said you're going to be like tweaking individual weapon variables and everything yeah. so it, it seems like you can go in pretty in depth in it and it's really the only limitations it's not like a, a strict map editor you're not like going to be able to change geometry in the map and stuff. i see i i just hope it's mm-hmm. easy for people to find the good maps but also like creators to surface the good maps because mm-hmm. if you're doing like it doesn't this game up go up to like 64 versus 64 yeah yes if you create a a a custom mode where you need like 128 people to play how like how are people gonna find out about it right well something tells me something tells me that people probably aren't gonna do those just because they realize their game mode's not gonna get played Mm. first of all i don't even know if they're gonna allow uh 128 on custom game modes because consoles Mm -hmm. don't Oh, Remember the, right, the right, right, right. Last gen right. ones only go up to 64 yeah. still. So, I wonder what they're going to do for the maps. Because, like, I feel like some of the Bad Company 2 maps are pretty small. So yeah, if you do, like, Valparaiso with 128 players, that'd be pretty hectic. So, yeah. I, I think maybe I'm crazy. I think I heard the old maps will only support 64. Okay. And yeah, the that would new make maps sense. are the only. Because the new maps have, like, the whole sector mechanic right. and everything like that. That only the new maps are going to do 128, which I'm fine with. I'm yeah, um, uh, I, I'm all right with variety. Yeah. I'm so excited about this. This is like the whole Left 4 Dead 2 modding days. Maybe I'll just build yeah, maps definitely. all day. Or game modes. It's game, not modes. App, it's like game, game modes. modes. Like I want. There's totally going to day one. There will be a game mode where it's like 63 versus one. The one guy is like a super soldier that mm-hmm. can run really fast with like only a knife, but he like one hit kills everyone. And like oh, it's yeah. everyone versus him or something like a like, like a predator game mode or something in one of yeah. the jungle maps, yeah. Or there's gonna be a game mode where it's like a really wide open map, and it's gonna be like a team of four snipers versus sixty people with knives and like smoke grenades or something, and they have to like run all the way across the map that, to get to. The that was something I had in mind. Maybe Albert, I might I might make that because I I was like um, similar to their example of what if we give. Uh, a very small crew, like the super high tech long range weapons. Yeah, oh, or like, yeah exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. imagine it's like it's like twenty people with World War Two jets mm-hmm. versus like ten people with like like modern Stinger rocket yeah. launchers, right? Like shooting down old World War Two planes. Yeah, cause I, that was making me think like the old uh, Splinter Cell games had the spies versus mercs game mode, where one team was the uh, of course high gadget uh, spies mm-hmm. that didn't have like super guns, but they could sneak around and have all kinds of gadgets to do stuff with and they'd have to solve an objective while the other team was the mercs which just obviously had guns and stuff yeah so you could do a game mode like that all i can say is that the battlefield youtube content creators just got all of the content they ever need to make yeah it's definitely. a weekly series where they try out new game modes and boom a video a week maybe two Easy content. Easy content. Jack Frags, you're welcome. <laughs> Here's your content. Hey, they can probably um, just remake the Battle Royale mode in this. Probably, that would actually honestly. be kind of fun. Honestly. Honestly, what would be cool is just just 
maybe I'm bored, boring, but I, I talked to you guys earlier about like just doing 16 v 16 on a bad company two map on rush is literally just like play bad company two mm-hmm. again. Yeah. Like OG cool. classic. Yeah. yeah. It'd be cool if they could do like, Hey, you know, your HUD changes back to the old bad company two HUD or like just time, just like, uh, like time. What am I trying to say? Like time era swap it where it's like, Hey, it's, it's Valparaiso 16 v 16 rush. But you're playing World War II 1942 soldiers instead with, like, you know, MP44s instead mm-hmm. of, like, XM8s and stuff like that. That'd be funny. Mm-hmm. It's going to be so good. And they yeah. still have one more game mode to reveal, right? They haven't revealed what Hazard Zone is yet. Yeah, they haven't given us all the details on Hazard Zone, so we still need to see that. Yeah, this, this game's looking like there's quite a bit to offer at launch, so that is definitely a positive. I'm hopeful for this game. I'm really hoping they pull this one off. It sounds like they're making the right steps. It seems that way, yeah. I I wouldn't say they've really had a like media misstep so far. There, there's that, only one good. thing that they haven't confirmed yet that's weighing my decision on this game, and it might be something that Alex doesn't like, but they need to not go back to Battlefield 4 gunplay and go to Battlefield 5 gunplay. Uh, what, what do you mean by that, no, I guess? No random spread and have spray patterns. Oh, yeah. Well, that's fine. Yeah. I agree with all that. Yeah. Guns do feel really good in it. Yeah. Five. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. The guns are better. Like, purely the guns are better in Battlefield 4, but the gun play is better in Battlefield mm-hmm. 5. Yeah. And I feel Battlefield 5 uh, better uh, represents the recoil, I guess, of your gun yeah. to uh, simulate the spread rather than, yeah, like you said, in Battlefield 4, the. the spray of the rounds in the cone would just be random yeah whereas uh battlefield 5 kind of actually illustrates it to you and and i and i hope that they took that the fact that everyone was like battlefield 5 was a disaster because it didn't have content but everyone unanimously agreed that the gunplay was like the best in the series so i hope they take that mm-hmm. into the next one but we don't know so we'll have to see yeah, we'll see because yeah they have, they've shown only a little scant bits of gameplay, and it's really hard to glean much from yeah. it. And who even knows if that's like the final? Yeah, exactly. Game. It's like pre-alpha gameplay footage or whatever. But this so. game does come out in three months. So. It is very close, and it's... yeah, there's supposed to be a beta soonish. I think in about a month and a half. So Tristan John, what's up? The only man who's pre-ordered here so far. Time to time to jump in right into the editor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Tristan streaming. Battlefield 20 tune in yeah. editor he's just dragging like <laughs> just tweaking variables just dragging yeah. if then statements around <laughs> in like a gooey editor all right um we're uh, d- 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 we got time we'll run through this last part um maybe we'll cut it short if we if we go more than like 20 minutes it shouldn't take us too long should it yep so uh with ea being the last like group to do their big e3 press conference if you can consider like the sad showing that half the other companies E3 press releases wow. were. Um, let's be real. We, we rated them pretty low, guys. You, you low can't energy. call me out on that. Um, I thought it would be good to go... There's what? We're almost in August at this point, so it's about four months, maybe like... Yeah, four months, right? Yep, uh, yep, four months. Uh, four full five months. months technically. Five months? Five, 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 four five months. Five full months? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a little past the halfway of the year, but just... To talk about some of the games we're looking forward to um, that are coming out this year. Okay. So I will go. We'll go. I gave you guys a list. Game Informer mm-hmm. has a nice list. Thank you, whoever edits that list, to constantly update it for release dates um, of games that are coming out. I'm just going to go month by month. And if you guys have a game that month that you are excited for, talk about it. You can talk as long or as little as you want. Well, maybe not as long as you want, but as little as you want. I, I have right, ten that's, games. That's a lot. I have, I have seven. Okay, Alex, you wanna you wanna give us a sneak preview on eight, eight, eight games. games. Okay, Ooh, okay, okay. Maybe I was a little short. Maybe I was a little stingy, huh? Okay. Anyways, August. I put. Uh, oh, 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 this ahead, is kind Tracy. of weird, huh? I put Lemnus mm-hmm. Gate. Okay. Yeah. Oh. It's that uh, kind of like RTS FPS strategic. Team based shooter. Oh, mm-hmm. that showed up during E3. I yeah. Think. Yes. Uh, some streamers were streaming it. Did you happen to catch a preview of it? No, I have not. Did it look good? Oh, okay. It looks 
it's pretty big brain. It's honestly really cool. It took me a few rounds to really understand what was going on with the time loop mechanic, but when I was starting to see it and understand it, it's like, whoa, this is actually a pretty clever shooter game. Mm. And it's only about $16, I think, so that's actually a pretty good price, too. And I think it's on Xbox Game Pass. Wow. Thanks, wow, Phil. <laughs> it's yeah. never been a better time to be a gamer. But yeah, that, that game actually looks really cool. Yeah. I'll definitely have to look at it, see what kind of extra content they throw into it, because yeah. That could and when does that come out? Cool. September 28th. What? Oh, I call that August, Wait. dude. But... It says but. August 3rd on the website. Okay. So either that website is wrong or Steam is wrong. Okay. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. Mm-hmm. it it's a time loop. It's just uh, temporal. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. So I threw uh, No More Heroes 3 is coming out what? in what? August. You're hyped for that? Of course. I loved uh, No More Heroes 1 and 2. I know, the game looks crusty, but that's just kind of a pseudo yeah, special Wait, at this how point. are you even going to play it? I'm not. I'm going to watch somebody play it. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I live vicariously through games, so I'm look, I'm excited for it, but I'm not even going to play it. But so, you're not supporting you the sequel. Yep. You should just buy it and not play it. I guess I could do that, but... Does no, Grasshopper need money that badly? Probably. I feel like the last No More Heroes haven't done that well, so... But we'll have to see. Yeah, I, I don't know. I find them funny, and they have a good story. And I, it has Robin Atkin Downs as the main voice actor, so I, I enjoy it. Doesn't he voice the medic in TF2? Yes. Okay. Amongst okay. many other characters. All right, my next one, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. Oh, that comes out in August? August 24th. Wow. Okay, that came out way faster than I thought it would be. I don't think anything needs to be said about this game. It's got good animation it looks fun that's all i need yeah and i, I, I like might the pick art it up style on ps5 pretty cute. or do i pick it up on pc so i can play it on my switch uh, swim deck mm-hmm. switch steam deck yep all right any more august games negative mm-hmm. negative all right moving into september i got two i got death loop Good. as expected Okay. Yeah, okay. Everybody okay. excited on the for bingo, that. Did you right? watch? Did you watch the PlayStation thing of that? I did not. Oh my goodness! I, leaving yourself pure. Maybe you're already going to get it, so you just don't want to. Yeah, that's fine. yeah, exactly. Time management has been an issue as of recent, but uh, yeah. Ha! I like that. Uh, was that supposed to be a pun? Uh, n- now it is. Now yeah, it's a pun. You okay. chose okay. Lemnus Gate and you chose Deathloop. Yeah, it's all yeah. time related. Ooh. I'm I'm waiting for Alex's uh, temporal pincer joke to come out. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's how we wrap it all together. Out. Um, and then my other game is WarioWare. Get it together. Ooh, that's me. I got mm. that on my list. I got that on my list. WarioWare, low key, a, a sleeper series for Nintendo. Maybe it's not mm-hmm. sleeper. I just love WarioWare. It's so goofy and just, I don't know. Yeah, it's just those panic like two second mini games. It's great. Yeah. Jump in with friends. I'm surprised but... they didn't make... Maybe they did, but I'm surprised there's no... You know, when Nintendo was making mobile games, I'm surprised they didn't make a WarioWare game on mobile. I want to say they did on DS, but I can't remember. I'm in, on, I'm in on phones. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they made a touch, touch game, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. I don't think I played the one on the... The last one I played was uh, Smooth Moves on the Wii, so maybe... I don't know. I don't know if I've been missing out on a lot for talking a lot of hype about WarioWare, but uh, <laughs> Smooth Moves was real fun. A, a real sleeper hit. You slept through all of them. Yeah, <laughs> a resident <laughs> sleeper hit. One might even say. <laughs> all right. Yep. So my September title is a uh, Lost Judgment, the sequel mm. to Judgment Judge Eyes, as I remember it. I think it's called Judgment in the U.S. But yeah, the sequel to the Yakuza spinoff. So it's going to be a murder mystery. I'm looking forward to that. I, I keep having to make the joke, but, you know, you got to play it because it's the last one of the series. Yep, exactly. <laughs> the town agency shutting it down, potentially. We'll see. Hopefully it comes back, or maybe he'll just have to do another project. But, yeah, it, it's looking really good. They released a few gameplay trailers and stuff recently. It's looking really sweet. A lot of improvements to the brawler system. So, yeah, excited for that one excited all right mm-hmm. 
Tristan, any more September? Oh, you gave all your games. No, I, I gave both mine. All right, October. I think it goes without saying. Uh, Battlefield 2042 is probably on all our lists. It's on my list. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other one I got is actually uh, Back for Blood. I, I think this one might end up being a co-op game for us, but we'll see. If everybody I'm not picks a big up zombie me. guy, you yeah. guys might have to two man this. All right, well, yeah, we'll we'll find other people. Yeah, we'll, spiritual uh, we'll successor. We'll be playing Battlefield. You guys got like a week to play this game, and then Battlefield is coming out. Ten full days plus early access. Come on, we got this. Wait, what do you mean early access? I'm sure Back for Blood will have some dumb early access thing. Battlefield does, so I don't know when the early access date for that one is. Yeah, I don't remember either. But yeah. Alex, you got any October games, or do you want me to go? Uh, go ahead. That oh, that was your those game. were my only two, yeah. And, and mine were the same, actually, so oh, I don't need oh. to go. Oh, okay. actually, I do have one more, but I'll, I'll go after you. Okay, um, I have, let's see, which, we got, I got two more. Um, I don't know if I'll pick it up, but I'm very excited for it, but that's just Metroid Dread. Mm. Um, I, kill me, but, not kill me. Kill shoot you? Me, shoot well, me, excuse you. I meant to say that, shoot me, but, um, <laughs> I've never played a Metroid Prime game, but I love the 2D Metroid games. It, so. It's, yeah, maybe that's why I didn't put it down. I purposely saw it and skipped over it. We'll have to see, though, because I might be busy playing other... This is a game where if I'm, if I'm in a drought, right? Like, what was my last game that I said back in September? I already forget. Uh, Warrior comes out September 10th, right? So I'm going to have some time potentially if i'm not trying to speed run through mgs5 to get my backlog bet done mm-hmm. um to play a game in october in early october so this might be that game um who knows either way my last game to round out the end of the month mario party superstars oh yeah 100 hey. gonna get all the friends over have a barbecue and play mario party that's that's my third one as well oh that's your third one as well one that I'm sad I couldn't say is on this that is on this list, but I, is not on my list. Age of Empires four. Why? Why would Age of Empires four? Why should it be on anyone's list? Because I'm such a big strategy game, especially RTS game, and there's so few RTS games coming out right now because it's just such a very unpopular like mm-hmm. genre, and it just feels like if you don't buy this game, like the genre is just going to be more dead. Like if a if a if a name brand like Age of Empires four can't be financially successful, then no game can. Honestly, AOE two, pretty hot right now. That's true. Yeah, it's faced a bit of a resurgence ever since it came out on Steam again. I know that they do tournaments from every every so often, and they get okay viewership on Twitch. Not like I, super spectacular, but yeah. And they, there's like. Regular DLC that comes out. Yeah, they've come out with, like, new civilizations since then, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Skin support still, which is cool, honestly. It's kind of like the uh, old-school RuneScape situation, where devs go back to an old game and breathe new life into it, in a way. In a way. All right. November. What's on Alex and I's list, can you hmm. guess? I wonder. FF14 Endwalker, perhaps? That might be on my list. In fact, it is the only game in November. Yeah, that's my only wow. one, too. I got four games in November. You got four Dang. games? All right. Lay them on us. All right. Well, one of them is Forza Horizon 5. Okay. Okay. Going down to Mexico. The other one is... Is Just Dance 2022. <laughs> Just Dance 2022 without Little Nas X. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, Shin Megami Tensei V. Oh, oh yeah. And number three and number four are Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Oh, you're still are holding you on to get Pokemon, both? huh? You have to choose one or the other. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get one, one of them. Other. Sure. I mean, I just put both of them down. I haven't I haven't committed to which one yet. I, I, I played Diamond when I was younger. I don't know if I should stick with Diamond Same. or if I should go explore Pearl. Um, And I think it'll depend on what what the Pokemon group gets, because we usually have, like, a complicated trading system set up. Yep, yep, yep. Alrighty. There's only two games on December, and, you know, that's fine, because you, you only need one game to come out in this whole month. I mean, why would why would anyone dare release 
anywhere near Advance Wars 1 plus 2 <laughs> reboot uh-huh. camp. Because that's the game everyone's going to be playing starting yep. December 3rd. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, the reason none of the games are announced afterwards is because we're just canceling video games. Yeah, after video that. game. This is the last video game to ever yeah, come out. Perfection's <laughs> coming out, except for apparently the Dying Light game that's coming out like four days after it. But you know, you know. Also, I think the TBA list is a little outdated because, like, yeah, there League are of Legends Wild Drifter have. is on there, mm-hmm. and that game is definitely out. Um, there's another game I want to double check to make sure if it has... Oh, yeah. So, uh, we'll get into TBAs now. I want to start off first, because this is hilarious, and we talked about it last podcast, and I'm actually very hyped for it, is Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Uh, coming out this fall sometime, there's no hard set date, but, um, I will be the world's number one Nigel Thornberry player, mark my words. Mm. <clears throat> Marked? Marked? Marked and written into the <laughs> annual analysis spreadsheet. <laughs> Can't wait for you to win at Evo. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be great. By the way, that game will have better net code than uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So Absolutely, it will. They've already confirmed it's gonna have rollback. So nice. I don't know if you got random comment. Uh, the there was a guy who won a Capcom Street Fighter V like big online tournament, and they mm-hmm. were like, "What are you gonna do next after this victory?" And he said, "I'm gonna go play Guilty Gear Strive because it's a better game because it has better net code." Oof. And the announcers were just like. What do we say? <laughs> so, that was a random tangent. Mm-hmm. But, who else has a TBA game on here? I got a couple. Uh, my first one is uh, Earth Defense Force 6. Oh, man. Coming hot off the oh, heels of EDF 5. I need more. It's currently still a 2021 up in the air release date. I'm thinking it might come out in 2022, but I can wait. I'm still hot off the heels of 5, so... I can wait a bit longer, but I don't want to get burned out. If you play, so you play another one too. Yeah, soon. I feel if I start one now, if I come out too early, yeah, I'll just stop playing it pretty fast. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it though. Should be a little bit of an upgrade over five, and it's just stupid, silly fun. Tristan, we're going to go Ron Robin here. Oh, I, I put maybe the new Destiny 2 DLC question mark. Oh, is there one slayed for this uh, season? The the Witch Queen. Oh. Didn't they have, like, the Taken King or something, and now they have the Witch Queen? Yes. Okay. All right, mine's probably on Alex's list. Um, Total War Warhammer 3. Yep. This is scary. This game is scary because they haven't announced it yet, and there's so many games I want to play. But as soon as this... It, it needs, like, a two-week or three-week, like danger zone around it because mm-hmm. and, and, like after it like if it comes out in october or november oh god like please come out like early november because then i can have like a week or maybe two weeks of battlefield and then i can start playing this game yeah i i'm really looking forward to this game and like i'm playing through warhammer 2 a little bit right now and I'm like, oh man, I want to start a Clan Boulder Mortal Empires campaign when they start in Hell Pit. But I want, I'm like, oh man, but if I wait, I can get Kislev and stuff on there over in that section too. So there'll be a bit more interesting gameplay. So I'm like, oh, I'll wait. So I really wish we knew a release date for it right now. But yeah, it totally. It, once that date drops, I need time because that's going to be potentially just hours dropped into that game. I'm really looking forward to playing Kislev and stuff. Tristan. Uh, I put Digimon Survive. Oh my goodness. That I've been waiting for that game for a very long like low key. Is that low sequel key. to Metal Gear Survive? Yeah. I <laughs> said the same universe. Uh, uh, no, it's like a survival role playing Digimon game. That sounds interesting. Like PUBG? I know. Uh, <laughs> is it Royale? Oh my goodness. I, I can't right now. Um, have no, you I don't know. Pokemon they, Unite yet? Hold your horses. I'm getting okay. there. Don't don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, I they haven't released too much information about it. They've been kind of holding off and delaying the game, but I just really want it to come out uh, to 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 see what it actually is. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Any more, Tristan or Alex? Are we? Are we? I'm I, I got. I got one more. I got Shadow Warrior Three. 
Nice. Which is it's kind of like a Doom Eternal like game, but it's just kind of colorful. We talked about it before. Looks really fun. Action shooter game, right up my alley. And my last one, as Alex mentioned, Pokemon Unite. That's no. out, isn't it? No, 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 no. It's only out on the Nintendo Switch. Mm. What's the difference? I want to I play it on my phone. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. You want to play a pay to... Have you played it on your Switch? I have. It's pay to win? I mean, it's pay to win once you get to a certain level. It's very pay to win. Like, if you spend 50 bucks, you can 1v5 the other team. <laughs> exactly. <Nice. laughs> but if you're playing at the lower levels, which I am, then People it doesn't really People play matter. for fun? You're playing like uh, other ten year olds. Yeah. Wait. Other ten year olds? Are you in, mm-hmm. are you implying I'm ten year old? <laughs> there was a clip on Twitch where it was like a couple of like pro league players or something playing and mm-hmm. they were beating up a a like a couple of players and they looked at the name, it was like Papa Papa something, Mama something and something, and they're like, Are we just bullying like a kid playing a video game with his parents to like bond as a family? And they, they felt real They bad. are. Yeah, probably. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What, what are you feeling about Pokemon Unite? It seems like a Babby's first MOBA game. It is. It's kind of weird because you're scoring points. Like, mm-hmm. you're not... You're not, like, taking down towers or anything. You, get, you level up. You get to choose what branch your abilities take. Mm. Um, so there's a little bit of strategy there. There's, def- there's no items. Um, so I would say it's a different, it's a unique Pokemon experience. Mm -hmm. With that 10 cent charm of just being able to buy your way into power. Tristan, that's what, that's what, that's what the Pokemon company says about every new Pokemon game they release every year. (laughs) It's a brand new Pokemon experience. It's a brand new Pokemon experience. One that you have, one, what's the correct phrase? Like you've never seen before. Yeah, there you go. Mm Mm-hmm. Or reimagined in a way that you've never, like, they're remakes, right? Yeah, oh my God. they have to sell it in some way. <sighs> all right. Any more? That's all I've got, got, a lot of Captain. Games. we got a lot of games. You know, it's a pretty stacked ha- latter half of uh, 2021. Assuming nothing else gets delayed, Cop Cop Death. Mm-hmm. A little shout out to Pokemon Legends Arceus. Is you that know? coming out in January? Just, well, I don't know, TBA is TBA, right? Just want to... I think it was confirmed January 2022. Oh. Well, anyways, I just wanted to give it a shout out. <laughs> shout out to Christina Apple. Right? So you brought up three Pokemon games. Are you in the pocket of the Pokemon company right now? What's going on? They have a gun to my head. Oh, no. We, we got to end this podcast. Mm-hmm. That wraps it up for episode 76. Not Fallout 76, but episode 76 of Viewport Relay. Viewport Relay is available on Radio Public, iTunes, Google Music, Stitcher, Podbean, and all your favorite podcast directories. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment, subscribe, review, and share it with your friends. We're also on social media as Viewport Gaming on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. But Tristan, why Viewport Gaming? Well, Viewport Relay is part of Viewport Gaming, a website that provides a look into video games through reviews, features, and podcasts. You can find all Viewport Gaming content at viewportgaming.com. Thank you, Tristan, and as always, I've been your host, Albert Corson, joined by Tristan Jung. Goodbye. And Alex Nestor. See you next time.